would love to get your perspective and a reading regarding my intuitive abilities. Okay, well, your, my first thought is just to tell you that you have them. You definitely have intuitive abilities. Um, I see you as blocked to some degree, like some are more open and active than others. I see you also questioning yourself, which is so common, right? Intuitive intensive students, we, we talk about this. I see you as missing stuff that's coming through because at, at this time it's coming through in a more subtle form and you miss it. You're not necessarily paying attention to the environment, which is where spirit likes to deposit information. And it does so in the form of patterns, frequency, patterns, sequences, numbers, coincidences, synchronicities. That's how spirit likes to maneuver in the beginning as you're starting to develop your relationship a bit more. And so a lot of that outlying information that they're leaving for you uh, is being missed by you simply because we're not noticing. So to practice noticing more and paying attention more and also when something shows up in the life that is an evidence of some sort, maybe you hear something, maybe you see something with your eyes or you see something in your mind's eye, maybe you feel something in your gut, a really strong feeling like stop what you're doing and acknowledge that. Don't let that just go away. Because if we never pay attention to what spirit is giving to us, then spirit will stop giving us stuff. And we want spirit to talk to us more. So when something's coming through, even if you're not quite sure whether it's a spirit message, always stop and say, hey, I heard that. Hey, I saw that. And I'm interested. What are you trying to say to me? Thank you, spirit, if that's you. Thank you for giving me this evidence. Can you give it to me in a way that will allow me to hear it more clearly? Or can you give it to me in a way that I would be able to interpret it more clearly? And if, if it's a guide, if it's an angel, if it's a spirit that's there for your enrichment and your edification, they will do exactly that. But see, what you can't do is stop, ask, thank them, acknowledge, and then just keep it moving. You know, get in your car and, and go do your next thing. Like you have to actually give them a space and some time to answer you. And here again, it's super important when the answer comes through, don't disregard it. Don't talk yourself out of it because the answer might be the color blue. Maybe that's the answer. Well, what does that mean? I couldn't tell you, and you might not know, but that's okay. Stay with it because, you know, a lot of angels are represented by colors. Blue has its own properties, and it has its own message that comes along with it. So even if, it doesn't, if, even if you don't understand what comes through, you take it and you document it or you keep it with you, and then they will come through more often, and they will come through more loudly because they realize you're looking and you're paying attention. So when spirit knows we're there to partner with them, when spirit knows we're finally saying yes and we're leaning into it, spirit shows up like gangbusters, especially your guides, especially all of your friends in spirit who are here specifically for your enrichment. They will start showing up in ways that are hard to miss. So first and foremost, start noticing more and start looking for the, with the purpose of noticing more. And what you're looking for here is what's normative versus what's non-normative. At night, going to sleep, it's normative for me to hear my husband snoring. Well, he's actually honking. He honks like a goose. It's crazy. Maybe a pig. <laughs> That's normative. I hear that when my husband's sleeping next to me. Non-normative music, because I live on five acres in a very private location. Non-normative voices. That would be non-normative. So when you start paying attention to what's normal and you take stock of everything that is normal, it makes it real easy to start noticing what's not normal. But if you're not even working with that on a fundamental level, and if you're not noticing, not aware, not interacting with phenomenon, then it remains very subtle from spirit's end because we're not engaging it. So first of all, you're intuitive. Second of all, you need to notice. You need to understand normative, non-normative. You need to start really working with what you got. Uh, with regard to your specific abilities, they're showing me claircognizance. Claircognizance is a psychic faculty where one moment you don't know and the next moment you do, but they're showing this with you as a facility within spaces. So to go into a space, a place, a house, a person's house, an office, and feel whether something, know something is right or wrong about that space. This is also connected to clairsentience where you can feel like with people too, 
the Bible would call this like a, a spirit of discernment. Like with people too, not really knowing much about them, you got their number kind of a thing. You are very, very accurate with regard to that. That's claircognizance and also clairsentience. The gift of knowing without knowing why you know and also the gift of feeling and trusting what it is that you feel. The gut is just like the message. When you trust the gut, when you walk into a room with people and you start feeling real sick in your stomach, but you stay there, the gut gets quieter. When you walk into a room of people and you start feeling real sick and you're like, I got to go, I'm honoring the message of my body, the message of my intuition, the gut starts getting stronger. So those are the two that spirit is showing me for you. The good news about psychic receivers and psychic abilities is that you don't have to focus on each one. Because spirit showing for you claircognizance and clairsentience doesn't mean that you now have to do all kinds of techniques in order to be more clairvoyant or clairaudient or clairaliant or any of these clairs. That's really not how it works. Well, it, it can work that way, but that's never really my focus as a teacher. Instead, what I recommend that you do is just focus on your vibration. Because when we align to the source of all things, that energy we would, we would call God energy, right? Creator energy, that's the highest vibration of them all. The higher our vibration, the closer we are to God. The closer we are to God, the more we become like God. Jesus says, you are all gods. That's the key right there, is to find ways to click into alignment so that we are running source energy. That feels to us in the human body like love, like bliss, like happiness, like passion, like playfulness, like laughter, like joy. All of that is the energy of God. And so when we find ways to align with that, we become like God. God, creator energy, and now we have all of that light entering into our life. And the light turns on all of the receivers. The light trips the switch, all the on switches for the clairvoyance, the clairaudience. The light is what lights up the entire mainframe for your psychic receivers. So instead of focusing on exercises to specifically open a third eye, focus on ways you can laugh be joyful, be in the energy of creator, be in the energy of worship, fellowship, all that is super high vibration and that will naturally open your psychic abilities as a byproduct, okay? I hope that's helpful to you. 